The Republican National Convention ended last week, and the Democratic National Convention ended last night. So let's talk politics. In 1992, Bill Clinton was running for the President of the United States. On his campaign trail was a reporter named Joe Klein who was running for Newsweek at the time. Joe Klein took some of the incidents that happened during that campaign, added some fictionalized elements to them, and wrote a book using the pen name of Anonymous called Primary Colors. It was one of the most talked about novels of the mid-90s. And in 1998, they decided to make a movie version of it. So today we're going to talk about Primary Colors, a novel by Joe Klein and a movie directed by Mike Nichols. What I'm really interested about this movie is uh, it is a very sort of accurate retelling of the Clinton campaign from 1992. There are elements of it that are fictionalized, so it's not a documentary by any means. But I want to talk about one scene in particular today. Now the story, just to give you a little background, is uh, a southern governor named Governor Stanton, who's played by John Travolta in this movie, uh, has an assistant named Henry, who is the grandson of a civil rights leader. So those are the two main characters you're going to see in this scene. What is going on in this is we've got a scene right before this where uh, another woman has come forward and accused uh, the governor, uh, John Travolta's character, of having a long-term affair with her. So it's what they call the bimbo eruption. Uh, it's another setback for the campaign. And in the midst of this chaos where you have uh, the Hillary Clinton character played by Emma Thompson uh, sort of <clears throat> pulling the troops together, outlining a strategy, Henry looks out the window of the hotel room because the governor is nowhere to be found. And out the window, he sees a donut shop and a lone figure talking to the clerk in that donut shop. The scene starts out from Henry's perspective. He's still in the hotel room looking out at the donut shop and we've got this long zoom into the donut shop. Uh, it's bathed in green light. It's got a little white backlight with some steam coming out from behind uh, as we slowly, slowly zoom in to the front doors. The overall mood of this shot is that we've come from this chaos of the hotel room where Emma Thompson's character is is, is, is frustrated and getting the team sort of focused on solving this issue. And we go to a scene that's calm and casual. You've got Governor Stanton sitting at the counter talking to the, to the donut clerk. Uh, and it's, it's as calm as it can be. The other takeaway from this shot is that the walls of the donut shop are all glass. So it's almost like he's looking into a fishbowl. It's a confined universe. It's a confined scene within this all glass uh, world where people can see out but all the activity is going to happen within there. Mike Nichols has been quoted as saying that when he first read the script this is the scene that he could visualize immediately and when he shot it it is what he visualized in that first reading. He really wanted to capture sort of the intimacy of the scene along with sort of the vulnerability of the main character of Governor Stanton. As Henry enters, the governor welcomes him, introduces him to, uh, to Danny, who's uh, working at the donut shop. Now, there's an interesting thing that happens right here. When Henry shakes Danny's hand, earlier in the movie there was this whole sequence about, the, the opening of the movie is about how the governor shakes hands and what the handshake means. There's always something going on with the left arm. Either he's going to clasp the person's hand and do a double handshake, or he's going to move up to the elbow or even the bicep. Uh, all those were intimate. When it got to the shoulder, it was a little bit less intimate. Uh, so all the things are, are about this are about the handshake. And when you look at Henry's handshake with Danny, it's an informal handshake. It's a dismissive handshake. Danny is not a major player to Henry at this time. His focus is entirely on the governor. And if you watch his eyes, he only looks at Danny like once or twice, uh, usually to answer a question. But when Danny's talking, uh, he's not really paying attention to them. He's focused intensely on what the governor is saying. So the next part of the scene is the governor now taking the conversation back to Danny. And he's going to ask about what was the best football game you saw this year? What was the best game you saw here, Danny? College, not pro. <sighs> Utah State versus San Diego State. Oh, yes, that was a great game, wasn't it? 
Yeah, I saw that. It was a yeah. great ground game. Yep. You gotta have a good ground game. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Danny answers with the Utah State uh, San Diego State game, which that year was actually a close game. I think it was a 24 21 game. Uh, and immediately, the governor responds to it by saying, That was a great game. He remembers the game. And he talks about there being a great ground game during that, during that game. To which Danny says, You really do need a great ground game, which is a sort of an obvious little a parallel to uh, what's going on with the campaign. Great presidential campaigns have a ground game. They have people on the ground in different locations working for him. Uh, and Danny may be part of that ground game uh, when it comes to his town. Sort of the, the running gag in this thing, in this scene, is that Danny is asking uh, Henry if he wants anything, specifically an apple fritter. He actually asks him three times. And on the third ask, Henry snaps back at, uh, at Danny and says, I've already told you. Apple fritter? No, I, I just said. Uh, I, I have one, Dan, but just one. Now, what's interesting about this is that the governor steps in and cuts off that snapback and says, I'll take the apple fritter, but just one. But he's going to take the apple fritter. That's what Danny wants. Danny wants to serve. He wants to take care of the people. And if all you're drinking is coffee, or if Henry's case you're not doing anything, then he's not helpful. The governor recognizes this and wants to sort of build that intimacy, that relationship. And so he says, all right, this guy really wants to sell an apple fritter. An apple fritter is a small price to pay to get the story. So after they have the discussion about college football, Danny recognizes that Henry and uh, the governor may need to talk. Henry excuses himself to go make fresh coffee. Now we're going to get the first close-up of the entire scene, and one of only a couple of close-ups in the entire scene. It's a close-up of the governor finally realizing what a predicament he's put himself into. When he does that, Henry moves one stool over. He makes the scene more intimate. He comes closer. He's going to console him. Henry came in abruptly into the scene. He was there to sort of check on the governor, maybe get him back so they could get back to planning on how to resurrect this campaign. And now as he's seen the governor interact with Danny and humanize Danny and humanize himself, he's now become more humanized. So Henry moves one stool closer. He makes the scene more intimate with the governor and is there to sort of comfort him, get him refocused, and then listen to him and acknowledge what he's thinking. The governor begins talking about how he wants to uh, take care of people like Danny. The interesting thing about this particular scene is we don't know how long the governor's been in this donut shop, but I don't know about you, when I go to a donut shop, it takes me a little while to get the clerk's full name. He knows his full name. He knows his history, that he was injured when he was 14. He knows that he didn't have insurance. He knows that his leg didn't heal correctly, and now he's walking with a limp. All these things are taken care of. He knows uh, how much money Danny makes. He made uh, five twenty-five an hour, and he works a 12-hour shift. He knows all these things because he's interested in the people. He's, again, focusing from on the micro rather than the macro. So he's got all this information that he's been able to, to, to gather. He's really sort of in tune with, uh, with Danny and with the people, less so with the larger campaign. And he's beginning to rub that off onto Henry. Henry is now committed, saying, we're going to take care of this guy. We're going to take care of guys like Danny. We can't let them down. God, if you, if you let a man like that go down, you don't deserve to take up space on this planet, do you? We won't let him go down. Henry's character has always been sort of an idealistic character in the first half of this movie. He's, he's always looking at, he's, he's, he's a political person, uh, but he is looking at it from an idealistic perspective. How can we make things better? Uh, this is the way the game is played. As he moves along and he works with other members of the campaign, he realizes that the rules are being bent and that politics aren't following the same guidelines that he does. His character will shift over time and it becomes more of this what I call political realist type of character. But what he's going through right now is still sort of the governor is bringing him back into this idealistic state of we're going to take care of the little guy. We're going to take care of the Dannys of the world. And Mike Nichols puts them into a two shot and you see them together. They're the, they're the two lone fighters who are now going to go against all the big issues and they're going to fight for the little guy. They're not going to let people like Danny down. They're not going to let him fail. 
So this this scene, this one scene in the donut shop, lasts about six minutes, uh, and at the end of it, we're we're now we've got uh, Henry and the governor recommitted to each other. They're in this two shot. They're recommitted. They're both into the idealistic world. Mike Nichols has got to bring us back. So we've been in this. We've gone from this macro world uh, in the scene before, where the whole campaign was trying to figure out the strategy to go forward after this latest bimbo eruption. We then delved into this narrow world, this micro world inside the donut shop, inside this fishbowl, where we we sort of realize what the governor's thinking and that Henry's going to recommit to him. Now, as we pull out of the scene, we got to go back to the macro world. So Mike Nichols brings the shot back outside of the of the donut shop, outside of the, the fishbowl. And he comes out at a different angle than what we came in. He comes out a little bit, you know, moved to back to the right, I guess. Um, and if you see this shot, I hope one thing comes to mind. Uh, if, you, if, if you see Edward Hopper's Nighthawks, uh, the painting, in this shot, then, hope, then we're on the same page. Um, so if you look at the painting versus this, they line up just right. You've got uh, the two sort of solitary characters in the, in the cafe sitting next to each other. In the painting, it's a man and a woman. And here is the governor and Henry. And you've got the, the clerk working behind the counter. That's Danny. So you've got this sort of artistic reference to pull us back, which just makes this a, a, such a fun shot to have. And it is our transition back from this micro world, this fishbowl, back into the larger scene, and the major story of the movie continues. So that's my quick assessment of one scene from, from 1998's Primary Colors, uh, directed by Mike Nichols. Uh, as we go forward in this, in this year, as we get closer to the elections in November, I anticipate I'll talk about more political movies, uh, perhaps The Candidate with Robert Redford, uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, all those movies that are just fantastic stories about politics and, and national politics specifically. Uh, but right now, today, we talked about one movie, so let's go to the countdown. We started today with a countdown at 999,980. Uh, today, we talked about primary colors, so that brings our total to 999,979. So thank you for joining me today as we talked about primary colors. Uh, I have a ton of fun putting these videos together. Uh, it's a great excuse for me to go back and rewatch some of my favorite movies. And the first time I watch them, I don't usually overanalyze them. But as I go through them, I'll pick out a favorite scene or a favorite character. Uh, and it's a great excuse for me to watch them all over again with maybe a different set of eyes than I had the first time. So. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do putting them together. If you are enjoying the videos, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to have you join in as, we, as I produce more videos. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, definitely want to hear those. Please put them in the, uh, in the section below. Uh, and that's it for today. So I hope you enjoy a million movies, and uh, we'll see you soon.